Mark Scott, Honor Chapel, take two. Brother Mark, when I think about you, I think of two words. I think of gratitude and I think of gospel. I am so grateful that I had the opportunity to be in your home, sitting at your table with you and Miss Carla as one of your students, learning about ministry and marriage. And I'm grateful that I've had the opportunity to be in your home, sitting at your table as one of your colleagues, talking to our students about ministry and preaching the gospel. I'm grateful that you were the premarital counselor for Michael and I. And we remember talking about conflict and compromise, of course, but what we remember most is that you preach the gospel. And I'm grateful that my office sits above one of your primary classrooms. And I get to hear you preach the gospel day in and day out, and I can picture it. You've got the Bible in one hand, but you're quoting the scripture because you have it memorized. And I'm grateful for that example. And I'm grateful that five years ago when I took this job, your office was one of the first places I stopped. And I asked you, do you think I can do this? And you said, I have no doubt. And a few years later, when I came back into that same office and I was confused and I was frustrated, I asked you, did you know that female preachers are not very popular? <laughs> I'm getting a lot of feedback and it's not great and I don't know what to do with it all and I feel like a fraud. And what do I tell these girls when I walk into class tomorrow? And you leaned across the desk and you said, you tell these girls to preach, not because they're women, but because the gospel needs to be preached. I'm going to be honest with you, it's a little selfish, but when I think about your retirement, I have moments where I wonder, can I do this job without Mark in my corner? And then I remember who you are. And I tell myself, it's Mark. He will always be in your corner. And I'm grateful for that too. Mark, I want to take this opportunity to say thank you. Thank you for being my teacher and my mentor, my colleague and my friend. Thank you so much for your commitment to Ozark Christian College and to the church and to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Over the years, you have inspired me and challenged me. You have modeled for me what it is to live a life sold out to our Savior. And so thank you for that. I'm so excited about your transition. I know you will be a blessing at Park Plaza, you and Miss Carla and the ministry there. Your voice will be missed on this campus. And yet I'm heartened to know that you will still be around teaching around the edges. So once again, thank you. Thank you for modeling a Christ-like life. God bless. Dad, we met in kind of a strange way. If you remember this, I met your daughter Allison here at Ozark while you and Carla were, were gone. Um, you were still in Colorado and started dating your daughter. And so I just knew about you, knew that you were a former academic dean of Ozark, that you were one of the best professors here. But I thought, hey, I don't have to feel any intimidation. He's not here. Next thing I know, you end up moving back to Joplin and become one of my professors. And not just one of my professors, but you become my academic advisor. I don't know if you even remember that. So not only am I dating your daughter, Am I taking your classes? But now you get to see all of my grades and all of my classes and determine my livelihood here at OCC. What I learned, Dad, is that you are one of the most humblest people um, I, I've ever met. Something that I learned from you and I know about you is that you have been following the Lord faithfully for decades upon decades upon decades. And what I have seen countlessly is that the gospel, although you have heard about it and you have preached about it and you have taught about it so much, that it has never become old news to you. It has always been good news and fresh news that is relevant for our lives every single day. And I just wanna thank you so much for that. In the beginning, when God created the world, on the first day, he said, let there be light, and there was light. On the third day, let there be plants, and there were plants. On the sixth day, let there be man, and there was man. And on the seventh day, God rested. But on the eighth day, he said, let there be preacher, and there was Mark Scott. Mark Scott has always been a preacher at heart. Now, when Mark first came to teach at Ozark back in 1983, I was 13 years old, he was, first of all, a preacher cleverly disguised as a professor. 
When I was a student, I took Mark for principles of interp class, and he taught us how to crack open a biblical text and find the sweet truth of God inside. I took him for Gospel of Mark class, and he took us back to the Holy Land. We followed Jesus so closely down those Palestinian roads that we got the dust of Jesus' sandals all over us. I took Mark Scott for preaching class, and in my desk, three rows back on the right-hand side in that little classroom in the basement of the library, he got me so fired and inspired to preach the gospel that I was ready to charge the gates of hell with a squirt gun. I mean, Mark was an amazing amazing teacher, a preacher cleverly disguised as a professor. Mark was also a preacher cleverly disguised as an academic dean. Before he ever passed the baton to Doug Aldridge, Mark Scott was dean here at Ozark for 13 years. He's the one who started our church planting major. He's the one who had a dream for a house for missionaries on campus, and we built the VIP residence down the hill. When Mark became dean, he made a pledge to the faculty. Our mission is training men and women for Christian service, and Mark said he would guard that mission like a junkyard dog, and he did. 13 years later, when he stepped out, we were still straight on course, 100% of Bible college, with a top-notch faculty that he had helped recruit and build. He was a preacher cleverly disguised as an academic dean. And through it all, of course, he's been a preacher cleverly disguised as a preacher. I don't know anybody who has preached more sermons in more places around the country and the world than Mark Scott. He has literally traveled a million miles to preach, and that's on top of his teaching ministry here. Mark Scott has been the energizer bunny, just multitasking, go, 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 wherever he can to talk about Jesus. I've seen him preach at a church on a Sunday night up in Nebraska and then hop in his car, drive 10 hours straight through the night so that he could hop out when he got here to Joplin, walk right in to lecture for his eight o'clock class on Monday morning. One time, uh, a police officer pulled him over and uh, the police officer said, sir, um, you weren't speeding, but a trucker called you in back there to say that you were reading a book while you were driving. And Mark Scott said, oh no, sir, I, I wasn't reading a book. He said, I was grading papers. <laughs> Mark Scott would just do whatever he needed to do so that he could preach the good news of Jesus. And so it's no surprise to me that Mark is retiring to be a preacher, cleverly disguised as a preacher at Park Plaza Christian Church here in Joplin. And if he has to leave Ozark, I, I guess I'm glad that he's gonna be here in town so that from time to time, I can still slip in the back of the sanctuary and catch a sermon. Because if you ask me who my favorite preacher is, I will tell you my favorite preacher is Mark Scott. Mark, on behalf of the Ozark Christian College family, I wanna say thank you for your 35 years of service here. Well done, good and faithful servant.